on this episode of uh, Men with Beards and Repose. Oh, the theme song's not playing at all. That's okay. We'll just keep going. Oh, there it is. That's my bad. Fraught with difficulties. <laughs> my producer's going to kill me. Did you take the insulin, Dave? Yeah, we're good. Did you take the shot? <clears throat> I did. <laughs> Do you prefer Richard or Dick, Mr. Lobdell? Dick. I'm a grower, not a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Season four kickoff. The last time you'll hear this rendition. So we'll stop with that now. Welcome to Big Words I Know by Heart, a program of rants, raves, phase, pet peeves, personal vendettas, celebrity interviews, and anything else we can fill the half hour with. My guest today was one of the pioneers of live country and western music in Buffalo in the late 60s, 70s, 80s, and today with his band Dick Lobdell and the Wanderers. His solo album, Thank You Very Much, was released on vinyl to critical and commercial praise and is currently available for free on the Internet Archive. Uh, dot work. Joining me in the co-host hot seat is a black metal musician and a man who just narrowly avoided leg amputation, Diabetes Dave. Welcome Uncle Dick and Dave. Hello, Tom. Hello. Dick, you just flew in from Rushford. Are your arms tired? Oh man, they're flapping away. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you coming on. Um, My you pleasure. Have, you haven't been on the show for almost 10 years now. Yeah, it's been a while. Last show we did was at Rushford, actually, uh, at my bar. Down at the historic and scenic Club Lobdell. Absolutely. It's still going strong. Mm -hmm. Got to get rid of that Martha Stewart block bar. <laughs> <laughs> the, cat, the cat's gone. Oh, finally. The cat is gone. <laughs> Are you ready for some more professional questions? Where are you going to get those? <laughs> <laughs> I tell the jokes. Oh, okay. I <laughs> I'll Did see if I can find a way to say I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start. Here's a nice little softball lob. What performers did you grow up with, and what led to you picking up the guitar? Oh, uh, that's easy. Uh, I started playing guitar because I didn't like playing the accordion. <laughs> is my, that true? Well, that's true. I played the, I, I played the accordion. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't like it. My, uh, my father uh, played guitar, self-taught, and played banjo, self-taught. And he also taught himself to play the accordion <laughs> and played some harmonica, too. And my sisters were going for accordion lessons, so they thought I should go, too. But then we discovered that I wasn't reading music. I could, I could play the song through. I would read the music just good enough. To hear the song, close the book and I could play it perfectly. Fooled the teachers for a long time, and I said, Dad, you're wasting your money. This isn't how it's supposed to go. Show me some chords on the guitar. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> so we played guitar ever since. And uh, as a musician, what message would you like to give to the kids today in regards to how badly they've fucked up country music? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's oh, fucked man. up, all right. You know, I, I, wish, I wish they would keep playing the music as the way it was meant to be. You know, soulful, meaningful, uh, the songs mean things. Now, the, I'm sorry, they're calling it country music, but it's, it's not. It's not. To me, pop music. It's, not, it's not even a good version of pop. It's just, yeah. how, loud, how loud can we scream the guitars? The guitars don't sound like guitars anymore at all. There's barely any steel guitar left anymore, mm -hmm. and the fiddles, well... <laughs> can it's you picture just, Johnny Cash wearing a baseball cap at one of his concerts? Oh, man. Oh, sure. Johnny yeah. Cash, sure. He could uh, probably pull it off. Jan Johnny Cash, could, he could wear anything or not wear anything. He, yeah, people loved him. Oh, camera was on me. I did not mean that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Dave, what's the, name, what's the name of your band this week, Dave? Sertraline. Um, and that's an obscure reference to what? Uh, Lord of the Rings? It's... A depression medication. <laughs> well, that's like chipper. <laughs> well, yeah. <clears throat> if you hear the music, it is kind of depressing in a good way, though. Is it grind punk, black metal, black metal core? It's technically it's post black metal. Hmm. So and you have an EP available in the trunk of your car? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, a back pocket. No, it's on. The, <laughs> we're on Bandcamp. Hmm. Searchling something Bandcamp dot com. Hmm. No idea, but go check it out on Bandcamp. I will not. Yeah, 
<laughs> you don't need it. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll buy it and put it in my desk drawer of CDs that remain unopened. Under the table, the booth. <laughs> you know. Back to Dick. Um, tell me a little bit, Mr. Lobdell, about the recording sessions for your hit album, Thank You Very Much, the subsequent royalty clash with your record label in the courts, <laughs> and dodging the paparazzi. Well, we, we, can't, we can't do anything about the record label because I owned it. <laughs> But uh, the, the recording sessions were they were great, um, and uh, it was Select Sound at the time that we. Oh, I've we been there. Recording. I yeah, went to, I Dick, recorded there Dick once. Bowerly, a uh, very good friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, who ended up uh, not he helped me uh, doing the production, and arranging, and uh, he also did uh, quite a bit of guitar work on the album with me. And we had uh, a lot of fun. We had we we never had. Uh, the whole ensemble of musicians in the studio at one time and uh, because it was 24 track at the time I was able to play bass, guitar, harmonica, sing and do some harmony with myself and backup singing <laughs> but we, we had some I was really really uh, uh, lucky to have the friends I had that they never recorded before and the girl that sings on the album never played in a band, sang in a band, never sang professional but she had a fantastic voice. She could sing like Barbra Streisand. What I've been trying. What's the girl's name and what is she doing now? Penny Eppolito, and I have not seen her in over 25 years, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> a falling out or no? No, no, she just, uh, she moved to Franklinville. We just, you know, just didn't see each other anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. I only knew her through a friend, and uh, when I when I decided I was going to do this album, I said I needed, and I heard her, how I met her was she was out in an audience when we were doing a show one night, and uh, I heard this girl singing. Now, I'm on a band with all the live music and everything, and I can hear this girl without a microphone singing from the audience. And I thought, i got to find out who this voice is, you know. Mm -hmm. And she sang without even trying. After one recording session, we stopped for a, a drink on the way home, and Barbara Streisand was on a jukebox. And we're sitting there, and she's singing along. Note for note with Barbara Streisand, and I'm looking at her in awe. And I said, you, you don't know, do you? She said, what? I said, you, you don't know the gift you have. You're singing note for note with Barbara Streisand, and you're not even breaking a sweat. She didn't know. Just belting it out. The, uh, the studio actually had her uh, do some uh, commercials and things. They, they liked her so much, too. So. Well, brushing up my questions today, I was trying to wrap my head around putting a vinyl album out back then. Like, today, you can just record the music and send it off into space, right, Dave? Sure. It's, it's immediately available to buy. Pressing vinyl, like, how many albums did you have to press? How costly was it? Did you recoup it, or was it more of a labor? No, no. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> no, no. We got, we got some money back, you know, but uh, no, we never recouped what it cost to to do the album and uh, pay the studio time and it was all I paid it for myself hmm. so that's why I own the record company <laughs> <laughs> now so any profits at all I was going to get <laughs> but we used to sell uh, the we used to sell the records at our shows and things mm -hmm. now with all due respect as your favorite nephew don't you feel like you're running out of time to ask me to be one of your pallbearers well, what, you don't want to do that. No, I really don't. It's, it's going to be so ashes. Much like work. Ashes? ashes? Oh, yeah. I can carry you, ashes. You can, you can DJ the show. Hmm. Well, no, it's going to be a party. I'm not, you know, none of that crying crap. If it's we a wanna, roast, I will MC. <laughs> that'll be fine. That'll be a roast and party, mm -hmm. drinking, whatever else you want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be vaping it up. Absolutely. <laughs> vaping it up. <laughs> Now, who have you opened for? What's the biggest venue you played? And do you prefer boxers, briefs, or free balling? Oh, there's <laughs> nothing like free balling. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the one of the biggest shows that we ever did was in Villa Maria College, and we opened a show for Mel Haggard. Wow! And uh, mm -hmm. there was, a, and of course, recently we, we lost him just last year, and uh, no, it was actually this year. Uh, it was it was a great it was a great thing that. Uh, we had pictures. It was so long ago. It was, uh, let's see, uh, 60s, probably late 60s. Hmm. But the show was at Villa Maria College, and we had, a, we had a really good time. He hit on my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to hang out with him d during the show or after the show? After the show. Uh, we, you know, uh, like I said, we, we opened the show for him, 
And then uh, one of the biggest shows we ever did, though, was out in Hamburg. I did a lot of shows with uh, W, W O L Radio, which became mm -hmm. W Y R K, and uh, we did a show out there, and they had ten thousand people out there. <laughs> it was at the hotel on Camp Road, and behind the hotel they had this big venue for uh, concerts, and the radio show, a radio station put on this show, and uh, they brought in, so I can't remember what her name was. Big star from Nashville, and we backed her up, and it was a it was a big deal. It was a lot of fun. I mean, be on stage with ten thousand people, and we used to do shows up on uh, Colvin Boulevard too with the radio station. That was a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. North Tonawanda or Tonawanda proper, as if there even is such a thing. I think it was just Tonawanda. <laughs> Dave, what's the biggest venue you've played? Are you doing the ribbon cutting on the stopping gas down the road this weekend? <laughs> yeah, your free donuts with a fill-up. You guys toured recently, didn't you, yeah. Sirline? Yeah, we went to started in Portland, Maine. Went to like Massachusetts, Philadelphia, um, New Jersey, Rochester. Hmm. <clears throat> that's pretty much it. It was great. Great to see other cities finally mm -hmm. instead of just playing in Buffalo every week. But <laughs> is it so good? Is it good music to cut myself to feel feelings to? Yes. Yeah, yeah. but not in that emo bitch way. <laughs> it's more of a mature understanding. Of like straight down the vein because you, you're serious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a that would be a good subgenre. Straight <laughs> down the vein. Um, Mr. Lobdell, mm -hmm. you performed a concert for Balcom Beach in Rushford Lake every July 4th. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who covered the transportation expenses, green room snacks, and travel arrangements? I believe it was me. Did you? <laughs> Did you play this year? The, uh, oh, yeah. This year, was, uh, it's, it's always 4th of July. It's way past. Mm -hmm. we're in, Missed it. We're in August now, Tom. <laughs> what year is oh, it? The girl, the girl's name was Margot Smith, by the way, I, which I... I did not remember. <laughs> Margo she, Smith? Yeah, Margo Smith. She lives in the villages right now in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was uh, she was famous for doing yodeling and things like She kind of looked like a, a short Dolly Parton. You know, I wonder with those girls who have yodeling skills. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she, she lives in the village and does shows down there. No. <laughs> but that's that's who the star was at the station that brought in that, that day. Mm -hmm. We did things with Grandpa Jones and uh, who the heck was the guy? The Country Joe and the Fish? No, Just no. Threw that out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, yeah, big, heavy guy used to sing gospel songs <laughs> on Hee Haw. Oh, God. Oh, wow. My dad yeah, well, would know. Yeah. I would not know. <laughs> My dad used to watch that show. I remember that show. Kenny, uh, Kenny Price. Hmm. Kenny yeah. Price. Yeah. I'm, I may Wikipedia that. Kenny Price. Um, I confuse my he, my early hee-haw with the Muppet Show con, uh, guess. So. <laughs> uh, Waldorf and Astoria, right? The two, whatever. <laughs> Nobody gets that, so I don't know why I was going there. Mr. Lobdell, your prostate. I thought it was going to be Dick. Dick? Yeah. <laughs> your prostate <laughs> was. Mr. Lobdell stuffs. <laughs> your prostate. <laughs> Was injected with nuclear seeds a few years back. Does this mean that you can retaliate on North Korea with your genitals if necessary? Why not? I glow in the dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gatling gun you of gotta uh, see, retaliation. You gotta see my toilet. It glows. <laughs> no nightlight needed. No. <laughs> and how many bat mitzvahs have you rocked the fuck out at? Not one. <laughs> not one? <laughs> not one. <laughs> <laughs> You got to talk to your booking agent. Some money there. <laughs> I got to get one. <laughs> um, this one was for Auntie Linda, so I had to retool it. Auntie Linda could not be with us. She is uh, be well, Auntie Linda. Rushford Lake, where your summer home is located, is drained every fall to avoid ice jams and dock damage. If the lake were filled with Doors Scotch, how long would it take your wife, my Auntie Linda, to single-handedly empty it? I could actually <laughs> almost answer that within uh, a month's period. It would, she a could month? do it. She could probably do it. Yeah, six months. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's one more for Auntie Linda. With all due respect to Auntie Linda, what was the return policy on your second marriage? 
Uh, oh, she was told. Uh, she was told. She was told by my first wife. He's yours. Don't give him back. <laughs> I, I don't want him. You got him out. He's all yours. <laughs> and follow-up question: As a guest at my wedding, why didn't you tell me that my first marriage was the Mulligan? Well, you didn't. I, I didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> You I didn't, first of all, I didn't think you were going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody did. Nobody did. Well, I think you just did it to prove us all wrong. <laughs> yeah, that could be, too. That could be. <laughs> Very well could be. <laughs> but look what good came of that. We've yes. got little Benny. I have my son. And, Absolutely. Uh, I and he's change a that for beautiful the world. little boy. I'll be paying on that for Joe. 13 more years. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Unless he gets an extension loan and you got to go get him oh through my God. college. <laughs> don't even, don't say the C word around me. I, I'll, I will have a panic attack hey, on the happens. show. It college. <laughs> I think of a different C word when I sign those <laughs> checks. <laughs> you always get a job at Messias. Oh, the drop in the plug. How's it going there? Pretty great? No. No? No. Care to expound, Dave? There's nothing to talk about. It's mm -hmm. just, you, you know, mm -hmm. you know how it is. Hmm. It's just show up, spend a couple hours, go home, cry. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are in the rear view. <laughs> Moving back to Dick. <laughs> this one I just worked in before we started rolling. Uh, it hit me on the right here. Between the bar fights, carrying a gun to Bill's games, and illegal street <laughs> racing, would you say that Buffalo has changed slightly since you moved here in the 60s? Oh, yeah. It, it's changed. The, the teams, I'm sorry to say. I used to be a really... Crips and Bloods? We're I, talking I probably, football. I probably shouldn't get into this thing with the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. It's probably not. It, that could take the rest of the night. It is late <laughs> August. It's coming up. Are they going all the way this year? Uh, yeah, they're going all the way down. <laughs> That's the only direction I see. I don't know. I, don't know. Just, mm -hmm. I, I, like many, are disappointed with the trades they've made. We won't even mention Sammy Watkins. Well, uh, I won't say any, anybody else's name. <laughs> I know you yell at the NASCAR down at your place in Florida. I don't All know if time. you yell at the Bills games. Down oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, I won't be seeing them this year. I, I usually had the NFL team mm -hmm. uh, ticket, but I didn't think there was going to be anything worth watching. Mm. So far, they've proved me right. <laughs> Dave, but we always have the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Dave, do you, uh, do you want to weigh in on that? Sports? Sports? Eh? I'm not big in the sports. Same here. Like I, I, okay. I think the Bills are going to do like four four wins this year. Four and done? Four and done. That's it. And you'll be mm -hmm. lucky if you see that. That's a good yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah. That's, those, that's where the teams don't show up on the other side? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some bar fight stories too, but I haven't. I haven't heard any from your perspective. I've seen a lot of them. You mixed it up a lot. You've been in some too, a, haven't you? Well, a couple. I used to when I originally started. When I started playing, I was playing. My brother got me the job because he, it's where he used to drink. He used to be called the Stockyard Inn down on William Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, not too right, far from it. It was right by the Stockyard, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, well, we used to call it the Friday night fights because it was guaranteed there would be a fight. The guys come in, you know, girls come in drinking, you know. Somebody wants something that somebody else has got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to fight for it. <laughs> yeah. So we we uh, we learned to grab the guitars and back like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you played. Uh, I don't know what Al Oops was called before, but you used to play there. It was called Barafados. And for, we were there for quite a while. The original Barafados. Yes. Barifatos. And my uh, my bass player at the time, uh, he lives uh, in the village. His name is Joel Heckman. Mm -hmm. Ironically, he's here in Buffalo today. And they had to they had to come back up because his uh, his wife's brother died. Mm -hmm. But uh, he uh, he was just here and stayed at Rushford with us for a couple of weeks. They uh, in their motorhome down at the campground. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he drove all the way back to Florida with a 39-foot Winnebago, Damn. and he has a heart condition. I was kind of worried about him, but he made it all the way down, and then her brother died, and they had to turn right around and come back up. I hate to tell you this, but you guys got to start taking it a little easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, it. That's that, all I get is that a just, yeah. That, well, it doesn't bode well when you tell us something. You know, we're like, we're yeah. like kids. Mm -hmm. Tell us not to do something if you want us to do it. Because we will. If we have that in common. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. Well, yes, I can. <laughs> Guess what I'm going to do now. Yeah, what yep. are you going to do now? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now, 
Uh, don't you feel that each additional Hank Williams was a mistake and an embarrassment in the biological as well as the musical sense compared to the original? I do. Good. I do. Good. Uh, but the third one, uh, Hank Jr.'s son. Hank 3. Hank 3. H cubed. He I is. think he spilled He this. is. He's the real deal. Hmm. Uh, Hank Jr., eh, he was kind of off his own world. He hated, I don't know if you ever said it, but I could always, it always seemed to me, he hated having to follow in his father's footsteps and do his father's songs and sounding like his father. Out of obligation. So he never really did sound like his father, but the grandson is. He sound he can hmm. sound like him, and he doesn't mind sound like him, and he's a, he's a fabulous musician. Well, Hank Jr. is a, a fabulous musician on top of that, though. For my for my two cents, I still say that uh, Chris Stapleton is the second coming of Outlaw Country. Well, uh, that could be. I'm not a fan yet. It's gonna. I take, it takes a lot to. It takes a while. Over. Well, if you're talking about good hardcore old country, it better be. I see a lot of. <laughs> he seems like a Chris Christopherson just getting started. To me, he's got a lot of fans. I mean, I can't knock mm -hmm. him. He's he's doing great. So people people like him, and just like they, they sound like you, mm -hmm. they think a lot of them. So I'm a believer. Well, Dave, uh, I think your country tastes range from Johnny Cash to Johnny Cash. Yeah, that's it. Pretty much. <clears throat> it's some Randy Travis. Randy Travis. I go that far too. My wow. father was a huge fan, so I got into that when I was a kid. <laughs> Tell me where it all went wrong as a child, Dave. We'll save well, that for your episode. Yeah, there's not enough time. We just we just don't have time. There's no four there's, hour, there's no time. Four hour radio show here. Yeah. Hey, you got the same time I got. And you played it. Well, here's this question: How did you juggle a full time job plus managing a band plus managing a family for thirty years? You're See, working overtime. You're playing well, out till. You know, uh, I was I was telling that to, to Richard. Uh, when you're doing something you love, it's not work. You never work a day in your life. It's true. I love my job. Fortunately, I love my job as a, in the elevator industry. And I absolutely loved playing. It's in my heart and my soul. Love my family. Mm -hmm. That's why I never left to go to Nashville try to be a big star. But I played every weekend for over 30 years in Buffalo, so mm -hmm. sometimes five nights a week. Close the places down, too. Oh, yeah. You didn't well, have an well, early out. A lot of times we had to... Uh, during the week, had to go late on the drinking because I had to get up and go to work at 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you do it. If you love it, you do it. Were you pounding water? Or did you put a uh, bottle of water in the in the toolbox? Oh, no. What we was the trick? We, no, we just drank, drank easy at night. That's all. Uh -huh. <laughs> Have about three drinks and take it easy. Hmm. Weekends come though. <laughs> yeah, game on. Right? Yeah. Well, we had a we had a ritual between the, when I had the three piece band. It was me and our drummer Joel and, uh, and Joel Heckman and Joel Ferraro was our drummer. We would kill a quart of Johnny Walker Black a night. Yeah. And not get drunk. Not get drunk. We <laughs> we paced ourselves over four hours. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Oh yeah, and it worked it worked well, you know. Uh, then I, when I started getting drunk, and I couldn't believe it. I thought, why am I getting drunk? I had a piano player named Jamie Polina. Thought it would be nice if we drank Jack Daniels in shots while we're on break. <laughs> you know, three or four of them. Mm -hmm. And wash them down with Johnny Walker. <laughs> then I was getting drunk. And I thought, How come You're I'm on. getting drunk? Well, that'll do it. <laughs> I know you and I had a couple cold pops before I hung up my spurs. Uh, more than one. More than one. Well, we, days are over we still drink a little bit, but uh, now because of medication things, we don't, we don't drink as much as we used to. But mm -hmm. Well, now I get drunk on two or three drinks. So we have the two or three drinks to get drunk. <laughs> yeah, I'm a cheap drunk now. <laughs> Here's our topical joke that's probably way too soon. Uh, is it either you can answer this or take turns answering it? Is it true that Jimmy Stewart has been following close behind Hurricane Harvey, apologizing for any damage his invisible friend may have caused? <laughs> Is it in poor taste? Yeah. Yeah? Which, which part? Well, <laughs> which part is in poor taste? Heart, no, you can't put the rabbit in there. Why not? <laughs> I saw an opening I went for. No? Well, I figured you'd get the reference. Well, you asked me if it was in poor taste, and I'm yeah? telling you it was. <laughs> Dave, what, how do you Dave, what's your opinion? Was it in the wrong? I got nothing on that. <laughs> Have I gone too far this time? 
Well, no, you can just simply apologize to the people in Houston. <laughs> Why start now? Why start now? With uh, this episode dedicated to the victims of Hurricane Harvey. Well, there you go. All are. proceeds, of which there are none, <laughs> will be sent. <laughs> will be sent. <laughs> with our best wishes. With our best wishes. Good thoughts. And uh, Ernie Weber's Beef and Ale was another regular spot of yours back in the day. Good old Ernie. Yeah. I, did yeah. they reopen, did you tell me? I believe he did reopen. I think it's open right now. Hmm. I, uh, Damn good beef on WAC. Yeah, he did have. Mm -hmm. And that's in Lackawanna, right? Yes. Yeah. Last time I saw him was there. And mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, I had the privilege of playing a few songs with Ernie. And uh, I, uh, I did a lot, of, a lot of work with Ernie over the years. One time we were playing at a club down on Niagara Street. And who walks in? Wayne Newton. Wow. Hmm. I heard the girls screaming. I said, what's going on? Did and the underwear start flying? There's Wayne <laughs> Newton sitting on a table right in front of me, right by the stage. So what's he doing here? <laughs> he was playing Melody Fair. His business manager was related to the guy that owned the bar that we were at. And he just walked right in. Wow. I sat down and talked to him uh, on break and asked him if he'd get up and sing. He said, I can't do that. Hmm. I guess... He wasn't allowed to do that, you know. Cause Contractually? Well, probably. A lot of people were paying good money to see him at Melody Fair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That you, makes don't, sense. you don't think he's going to just stand up and let a <laughs> whole bunch of people at a honky tonk here? <laughs> That's when he was still a kid and he had blonde hair. Mm -hmm. That's a long time ago. <laughs> well, I don't. Yeah, that's. that's yeah, going yeah he had blonde All hair. I remember him looking at is, you know, he's red, just a, a big red bulb head. <laughs> Uh, that looks like he had a lot of lipo. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. Dave Mohawk's been resurrected. Uh, is your other haunt, Broadway Joe's, back yet? Has somebody rescued that place? No, I don't think they're going to bother no. with that. Broadway Diablo? Joe's? Yeah. yeah, they finally closed down. I played there. Yeah? I played there, too. <laughs> that place has been there forever. <laughs> Dave's played there with all 45 <clears throat> of the bands and subsequent side projects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many times. Mm -hmm. It was a. I love that place though. It was one of my favorites. Do you have a Mohawk show coming up? Me no. I don't have any shows coming up now. We're taking a break to write and then record mm -hmm. for at least four months, I think. The so fame many. got to be too much. Yeah, the, you know, too many chicks, mm -hmm. too much booze, just getting overwhelming. I can't handle main line vaping it up. Yeah, vaping it up too much. <laughs> just vaping in my face. Well, we are, we are winding to a close, so I will implore you to check out the bonus clips for this episode, 42.1, 42.2, and 42.3. There are three musical numbers by Dick that you do not want to miss. Um, plus, you can, can hear his album again. Thank you very much on uh, internetarchive.org and a lot of his other recordings. Dick, I thank you so much. Pleasure to be here, Tom. Sorry I couldn't make it last year. Any parting words? Be good to everybody. Treat people like you want to be treated. Hmm. It'll go a long way in life. I probably didn't listen to that advice the first time. No, you didn't. No. But you should. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, do you have any plugs you want to lay down? Just no. Listen to my band. That's all I got. Certaline. <laughs> As Sir, of this Sir recording. Trilene. Sir Trilene? Yes. Nobody's going to know how to spell I know. that. It's okay. Sound it out. Sir <laughs> <laughs> Trilene. Should be sponsored by Big Pharma. <laughs> no? Uh, no. <laughs> Walking to season four, gang. See you in a month. What'd you think? Good. A little bit different than the podcast. And then we'll do some pictures. Where you stand? Oh, I'm probably going to go over to Mike's house. I stopped in to see him just now. They got a, oh my God, talk about fiascos. His girlfriend is a nut job. She sees, she's an animal lover. She sees on Facebook a dog being abused. Jill does that too. There's pictures and the dog's really being abused. So she goes to find this guy's house. Really? Well, she goes and... Uh, Where the uh, animal's being abused. Yes, and uh, the yard is all big junkyard. She 
walks in there and just takes the dog. The dog is